All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, week two of online learning for Chem 110 begins this week. I uh, hope you guys had a good last week. Um, I hope exam three went well. Um, I also hope you guys are enjoying the weather. I know even through all this, it's nice to get outside and enjoy some of the fresh air. It's kind of how you stay healthy. I know I've been working on my pretty mediocre golf swing uh, in the past week. It's not getting any better. A lot of thrown clubs. So if anyone out there can help me on that, much appreciated. Um, but I'm going to be helping you on pHs of blood and buffers and titrations today. Only two problems in today's video, um, but it might end up being a longer video because of just how in-depth these problems can get. Uh, please feel free to reach out with questions as always um, to your TA. You can reach out to me um, or anyone that you seem to get help from. So we're going to go and get started um, with a simple, I should say simple, more in-depth buffer problem. Uh, looking at the pH of blood. So in the problem it says blood has a pH of 7.40. If a 1.5 liter buffer solution is needed, what mass of this sodium salt must be added to give the 1.5 liter solution that contains 5.52 grams of the acidic form of the salt? Okay, so there's a lot of information in this question. Uh, reading this, some students may get overwhelmed because we have basically three different values that are given what to start with. Let's write down what we know. So we have a pH equal to 7.40. And we have a volume of solution equal to 1.5 liters. And we know the mass of acid is 5.52 grams. Now, if you're wondering why I wrote acid, let's take a look at our two constituents in the problem. So we have NaH2PO4 and Na2HPO4. What do we notice is the difference between these two? Well, we lost an H from here to here, and we know when we lose or when we donate an H, that denotes a bronsted Lowry acid. So this one donates the H to somewhere else. We don't know it, most likely gonna be water. Um, and we get the single H. So that I denote is my acidic character in the problem. So the mass that we use of our acidic character is 5.52 grams. The molar mass of my acid, which again is this, we would add it up, it'd be 119.98 grams per mole. And I'll, for those of you who are Following along, I'm just going to write this next to it. This is my acidic character in the problem. And then molar mass of my base, which in this case is the conjugate base, uh, this, this ion or molecule would be 141.97 grams per mole. And this, again, this is my Na2HPO4. So I've written down everything I know. Um, we would, on the exam or homework, be given the Ka of this acid. It's 6.2 times 10 raised to the negative eighth. Just for all intent purposes, I'm going to find the pK really quick. Negative log of 6.2 times 10 to the negative eighth is equal to the pKa, which in this case is 7.21. Uh, the reason why I did this, we haven't done this before with a buffer problem, but the reason why is that working with more in-depth buffers and titrations, you're going to want to find the pKa whenever you have a Ka. It will always help you um, in some way, shape, or form. It's going to help, especially looking at equivalence point and half equivalence points in the next problem. pKa is definitely going to help. So now I literally have everything that I know about this problem written down. So let's find... We can pick anywhere to start, but let's find the concentration of acid to start. That seems the best way to go because I'm given an acid and I'm given it in grams. So let's find that concentration. So I'm just gonna draw brackets, concentration of acid. So we know we have, if we have a concentration, that's units of molarity. So we need moles, but we're given grams. We should know that conversion. 5.52 grams divided by 
119.98 grams per mole is equal to 0 0.046 moles of acid. Okay. But I don't have molarity yet. Again, moles per liter. Well, I'm given 1.5 liters of solution. 1.5 liters to get 0 0.031 molar. Okay, so now I have a molarity of an acid. I have a pH and I have a pKa. We haven't worked with it yet, but you will this upcoming week in unit four. Um, it's called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, you may have seen it before, pH is equal to pKa plus log base over acid. Very common equation. Um, I enjoy using this a lot more than ice tables and BCA tables because it makes sense. Um, it's very easy. You just find the pH and the pKa of the solution, and then you need concentrations of base and acid. It's very easy to set up. You will use it in lab left and right. So why not use it here because it fits our um, what we have in the problem. So we have a pH 7.4. Where do we solve for pKa? 7.21 plus log. Uh, we don't know our base, right? And then 0 0.031 molar acid. So again, you would subtract this over. And then you can do logarithm functions. I would use the math solver. So once you subtract this over, you would get 0.19 is equal to the log of base over 0 0.031. If you don't know logarithms, go ahead and put it in your solver. If you do know logs, go ahead and work it out. But either way, you should get B to equal 0 0.0475 molar. So the concentration of base is 0 0.0475 molar. But we're not done. What's the problem say? What mass of this base? Okay, so now we have a mass, or we have a molarity, and we need a mass. So we have 0.0475 molar, and we need to go to moles. Let's multiply by liters, right? Because no molarity times liters would give us moles. You get 0 0.0173 moles of base. Now we have moles, and you guys know from general chemistry one, if we take our moles times our molar mass, which is 141.97, you get 0 .97. your grams, which in this case is 10.1 grams. So the answer to this problem would be you need 10.1 grams of Na2HPO4 to give the buffer. It's not really tough. Um, I think the worst part is setting it up. Um, again, I wrote on everything that I knew, even stuff that wasn't even given, like molar mass of acid, molar mass of base, uh, pKa, stuff that might be needed but is not given or asked for right away is always good to write down because then from there, all I had to do is find the concentration of my acid, use Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and then you're done. So again, there's many ways to do this problem. Um, this is the quickest way. Again, as we know on the exams, we're pressed for time. Um, this is the quickest way and definitely the most approachable way at my point. Uh, so if you have any questions, again, please feel free to ask. You're more than welcome to leave comments um, if you see mistakes or if you have questions about what I wrote or why I wrote it the way I did. Um, now here's the problem that's gonna take quite a bit of time. Titration problems. So titration problems, a lot of students do not like them because they're long. If you miss one part, you're gonna miss the rest. Um, this is, you can't really alter titration problems too much. You're always gonna have some volume of an acid or base with some molarity or volume of the opposite. So this is a very classic titration problem. You'll see it again in lab. Um, you'll see it again on your homework. You will see it again, most likely on exams. There'll be some sort of titration problem. Um, 
in some way, shape, or form. So let's go ahead and start working this one out. Um, I'm gonna be using multiple sheets of paper, so feel free to pause forward, backward the video. Um, I will not be working all on this page because we just can't fit that much work. So we have a titration of 20 mils of 0.1 molar acetic acid with 0.1 molar NaOH. So we have acetic acid and NaOH. Acetic acid is a weak acid, right? It's not one of our seven strong acids. And then NaOH we know is a group one cation with OH minus, so it's got to be a strong base. So if we have a weak acid and a strong base, we know we have a titration going on, right? Think about lab, you went to Chem 109, you always had some sort of acid in the beaker, and to get that pink color with the phenylphthalein, you needed to titrate with the base. So let's go ahead and find out how much of our titrant, the NaOH, we need to get to the equivalence point. Now the equivalence point, is the point where all the acid, which in this case the 20 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid, the equivalence point is where all of that is neutralized. So that's where all the acid is gone, and if we keep adding base, we're going to switch to a basic reaction. So let's go ahead and write out a chemical equation, just like any ice table problem. So we have acetic acid, C2 or HC2H3O2 plus NaOH, this is not an equilibrium, right? This is a unidirectional reaction for now. Right? If the acid donates this proton, we go to H2O and the Na comes over here. We have Na acetate sodium acetate, and then water. Just write the chemical equation. Again, it's not in equilibrium, it's unidirectional because we have that strong base. So let's find out once again what I need to get to the equivalence point, given what I know. So I'm given 0.1 molar acetic acid, right? 0.1 molar acetic acid. So if I have 0.1 molar, that's also 0.1 moles per liter, right? 0.1 molar is just units of moles per liter, so I would do 0.1 mole divided by one liter, and again, we have 20 milliliters of it, which is 0.02 liters, so if I take this times my volume, 0.020 liters, 0.002 moles of acetic acid. I'm just finding out so if we were in the lab right now and we have a beaker of 20 mils of 0.1 molar acetic acid, I'm just finding out how many moles of acetic acid we actually have by using a volume volume conversion. I didn't change anything yet. Now when you look at how much NaOH is gonna be needed to neutralize this acetic acid. So we have 0 0.002 moles of acid for every one mole of acid in my equation, one mole of acetic acid, one mole of NaOH, right? Everything's a one stoichiometric coefficient. So I also need 0 0.002 moles of NaOH. Okay, that's great. It tells me moles, but we don't really measure things in moles in the lab. We need a liter value, right? Because you add your titrant by spinning the stopcock and you're adding different milliliter values. So let's find how many liters this is. Again, this is all Chem 109 kind of math here. 0 0.002 moles of NaOH. Again, in the problem, it's 0.1 molar. So 0 0.100 moles per liter. And you would get 20 milliliters total. So what I just did, again, we haven't even started working the problem. We didn't solve for any pH. What I did was I got ahead. It's always nice to get ahead on these kind of problems. And I went ahead and looked, okay, so I need to get to an equivalence point. It probably is gonna be beneficial to know how many milliliters of my titrant, the NaOH, I need to get to that equivalence point. In this case, it's 20 milliliters. And you do that by using stoichiometry, and moles to liters conversions.
Okay, I'm moving on to another sheet of paper um, just so you guys don't get lost. Lost in the sauce. Um, pH at the beginning. I'm gonna go back and forth. So pH at the beginning. We should know how to do this by heart. Um, we've done so many of these kind of problems. Um, I would expect you to be able to stop the video and solve for pH at the beginning. If you don't know though, it's okay. Um, that's why I'm doing this video so that we can work it out. So I'm just gonna write pH at beginning so that for those of you who are not viewing this um, in real time can look. So we have, we now have our acidic reaction. Our acetic acid plus water is now in equilibrium, right? There's no strong acid or strong base with H3O plus and the acetate ion. How many times have we seen a weak acid in water giving hydronium and the conjugate base? At least 40. I mean, there's we've done it so many times now. Um, and we make an ice table. We were given 0.1 molar. We know there's no products. Minus X, carry the X down, plus X, plus X. Water is pointless. The Ka, again, given to you. Um, but for this case, I had to look it up because it was not given to me. Um, 1.7 negative fifth is equal to x squared 0 0.100 0 0 minus x. Solve, put in your math solver, do it by hand. You get an x value of 0 0.0133. Now, what do we know about x? Again, we need the pH. pH is the concentration of H plus or hydronium ion. Well, in this case, we have a concentration of hydronium ion at equilibrium, right? It's x. Well, we know x. So concentration of hydronium ion is equal to x, which is equal to 0 0.00133. So I take the negative log of x, which is just this again, and you get a pH of 2.875. So we're starting at a pH of 2.875. Does the answer make sense? Yes, I have an acid in a beaker. It's gonna be an acidic solution. It better be below seven. So I have to think about what's gonna happen going forward from here. So if I have a pH of 2.875, highly acidic, and I add NaOH, a strong base, is the pH gonna go down or up? Well, it's gonna go up because we're adding NaOH, right? NaOH, uh, let's see, 0.1 molar NaOH, that's gonna be way more base. That's gonna be above the 10, 11 range. Um, so if we're adding, a 10 and 11 pH substance to a 2.875 pH substance, we're probably gonna go up, right? Because it wants to approach that 10. So now we have solved for pH at the beginning. Now we need the pH after 7.5 milliliters of base has been added. I'm gonna switch because this will probably take the whole page. So the pH after 7.5 mils of base. So what do you think we're gonna do? What's the first step we've done in every single problem? Write the chemical equation. H, C2, H3, O2 plus H2O. Again, we have not reached equivalence point so we still have more acid available for us to work with. Goes to C2H3O2 minus plus H3O plus. Same exact equation. I guess I flipped these two around, but it's the same thing. Because um, again, we don't have anything different. We're still at the beginning because we have we're adding this right now. So we have this, and now we're going to add some base. So let's think about how much of what we have. So we know from the beginning, I'll pull it up for you guys. We know from this part that we start with 0 0.002 moles of acetic acid. So 
we have nothing here and we have nothing here, right? When I was, before I turned the stopcock on the beaker for the first time, or on the beaker, the burette, um, I have 0 0.002 moles of acetic acid in my beaker, right? There's nothing from these two in that beaker yet. Now I'm going to start adding base. So I'm just going to write plus base. Well, how much base did I add? I added point. 0.075 liters, right? 0 0.0075 liters times 0.1 molar, right? It's 0.1 molar would give me 0 0.00075 moles. So if I added 7.5 milliliters, which is 0 0.0075 liters times the molarity, I get a mole value. So now we have to think what's going to happen. So if I add basic anything, in this case NaOH, but if I add basic anything, is the acidic moles going to go up or down? If I have 0 0.002 moles of acid and I add 0 0.00075 moles of base, is this number going to go down or up? It's going to go down, right? It's going to neutralize. Is this number going to go down or up? It's going to go up because this is our basic character. And this is unchanged for now. Again, we added base. So our base, our conjugate base, is going to go up. And our acid is going to go down. So now I'm going to write after. So after all this happened. We have 0 0.00125 moles of acid. We have 0 0.00075 moles of base. And we have zero moles of H3O plus. Cool. I like to call this a BCA table um, because before we had 0 0.002 moles, we changed by this amount and we have after. Um, it's kind of like ice table, but BCA tables look at moles, ice tables look at molarity. So that's kind of how I do it. I do a BCA table and then we run the ice table. So now if we want to run an ice table, what's the only issue? Well, I'm in moles and I need concentration, which is in molarity. So I need some liter value. Moles divided by moles divided by liters. This is going to be zero anyways. How many liters do I have in the beaker right now? Well, according to the problem, I started with 20 milliliters and I added 7.5. So 20 plus 7.5 would be 27.5 mils or 0 0.0275 liters. So now I divide that and I get my new molarities. 0.045, we'll round up, 46 molar acid, and then 0 0.0273 molar conjugate. Now we run our ice table. Minus x, again, we have not reached equivalence point, so the acid is still disappearing. Plus x, plus x. This is x, this is 0 0.0273 plus x. This is 0 0.04546 minus X, Ka. The Ka doesn't change of acetic acid. So 1.8 times 10 raised to negative fifth is equal to products X times 0 0.0273 plus X divided by 0 0.04546 minus X. Put it in your calculator and you get x is equal to 2.99 times 10 raised to the negative fifth. So, if x is equal to 2.99 times 10 raised to the negative fifth, in this case, we scroll down, H3O plus happens to be x yet again. So x is equal to H3O plus. So I would take the negative log of 2.99 to the negative fifth 
and you get a pH of 4.52. We would stop here and we would need to think if our answer makes chemical sense. Well, I was at a pH of 2.875. If I was at a pH of 2.875 and I added some base, is my pH gonna go up or down? Well, it's obviously gonna go up, right? Because we're approaching that more basic pH. So that answer makes chemical sense. Perfect. So now we know the pH at the beginning, the pH after 7.5 milliliters of base have been added. The next part of the question, we did part two, is the pH at the equivalence point. Before I go on, what is significant about the equivalence point? It's when all moles of acid, in this case, have been neutralized by the NaOH. So all of our acetic acid is now gone. That is significant for how it changes the chemical equation. If all my acid is gone, let's take a look at our chemical equation, actually, so I can illustrate this better. If all of this is gone, what am I left with? H3O plus and C2H3O minus. Which one is in bigger concentration? C2H3O2 minus, the acetate ion. So once you're at equivalence point, the strategy for these is to flip the chemical equation. So what was my main product in the last time? It was the acetate ion. The main product getting to equivalence point was C2H3O minus. Now C2H3O2 minus becomes my main reactant because that's all that's left in the beaker is the conjugate base. So now this is going to react in water and it's going to go backwards now. Again, you have, you've added some sort of basic character to the point where you neutralized all of the acid. So now there is no acid left in that beaker. All you have left is your basic character, which in this case turned out to be our conjugate base. How many moles of our conjugate base do we have? Well, at the start, I said to get to equivalence point, we needed 0 0.002 moles of NaOH. So we needed 0 0.002 moles of base to get to this point. Now, at the equivalence point, there's no BCA table necessary. The only time you use the BCA table is when you have pH after 7.5 mils are added, pH after 10 milliliters are added, um, so and so. The equivalence point, all you need is the molarity, and then you run an ice table. So if I have 0 0.002 moles to run an ice table, I need a molar concentration which is some liter value. So I have to think how many liters do I have? This is where getting ahead comes in. I'm going back to the start. 20 mils of acetic acid to start. To get to a equivalence point, I added 20 mils of NaOH. So how many liters do I have? 20 plus 20 would give me 40 mils or 0.04 liters. So now I have 0 0.050 0 molar, 0 molar, 0 molar, ice table. Cool. Now we have the ice table done. My Ka is equal to 1.8 times 10 raised to negative fifth. What do I need to do now? Well, we, run, we ran the ice table and we have a K value, but the K value needs to be a KB because we have a base, right? Uh, originally, we had the KA because it was acetic acid reacting in water. Now it's acetate and a, or a basic salt. Usually it's sodium acetate, NaC2H3O2. But in this case, we just have the acid ion, which we know is basic from our former chemical equilibrium equation. So if this is basic, we need to get this to Kb. 
How do we do that? Well, KB is equal to KW, 1.00 times 10 raised to negative 14th divided by our KA. So our KB is 5.6 times 10 raised to negative 10. Now, we would solve just like normal, 5.6 times 10 raised to negative 10 is equal to x squared divided by 0 0.05 minus x. x is equal to, uh, let's round up here, 5.27 times 10 raised to negative sixth. Well, now what is x? x is the concentration of OH minus. If x is the concentration of OH minus, I can take the negative log of x to get a pOH. My pOH is equal to 5.278. 14 minus 5.278 is equal to my pH of 8.722. Once again, it makes sense. After adding 7.5 mils of base, we were at a pH of 4.52. Now we're at equivalence point after adding 20 milliliters, so almost triple, we're at 8.722. Makes sense. So we have now accomplished the long portion of this problem. Step one, step two, and step three. Now we need pH at 10 milliliters after the equivalence point. So basically what that means is pH after 10 milliliters of excess base, right? I reached the equivalence point. All of the acid has been neutralized by the base. Now just to be a chemist and mess with chemicals and other things, we're going to add 10 milliliters of NaOH to see what happens. So we were at equivalence point. So we're at a total equal solution of acid to base, and we're adding excess. What are we basically doing? It kind of sounds like a dilution almost, because you have some solution, and then normally in a dilution you add water, right? So let's think about let's think about kind of like that. You're diluting it, but with more base. So I'm just gonna write excess. So we have 0.1 molar NaOH and we add 10 milliliters, 0 0.010 liters, and we get 0 0.001 mole NaOH. That's just how much we're adding, right? We have 0 0.1 molar NaOH and we added 10 milliliters. So now if we have 0 0.001 molar NaOH, we need to get a pH. To get a pH in this case, it'd be meaningless. We need a pOH, right? Because we're looking at a really strong base, so we need the pOH. And to get that, I need concentration hydroxide ion, which is in a one-to-one -one ratio with Na, right? One Na one hydroxide. So if I can get the concentration of NaOH, I can get my concentration of OH. Well, I have molarity, sorry, wow, moles. I have 0 0.001 moles, now I need liters. So let's think about how many total liters now I've added. How many liters did I get to the equivalence point? Point zero four liters, right? Because I had 20 to start with of acetic acid. I added 20 milliliters of base to get to equivalence point. So now I have 0 0.04 liters. But I'm adding another 10. So I have 0 0.01 moles, got that from here. 0 0.04 liters get to equivalence point. Adding another 0 0.01, run the math, and you get. 0 0.020 molar NaOH, which is also equal to 
0 0.02 molar OH minus, right? Because there's one Na, one OH, we have 0 0.02 molar OH minus. POH is equal to the negative log of OH, which is equal to 1.6989. 14 minus POH gives us a pH of 12.30. That is a beast of a problem. Wow. That took four pages of work. Um, a grand, I'm using marker, so it probably wouldn't take you more than one. Um, but that is a lot of chemistry right there, a lot of stuff happening. Um, Please do a lot of titration problems. The more you do, the easier unit four will get. Everything builds off this until we get to entropy and enthalpy. Um, so if you can solve all four of these by yourself, again, feel free for the first time you do it by yourself, do it right alongside with me. Pause the video, play. Pause the video, play. I think that's the best way to learn. I got a lot of questions asking about how I should study. Um, for these online exams. And I really think the best way to do it, um, if you're looking at my material, is to do these videos side by side um, and then find a problem similar. There's plenty of titration. You can Google it. There's two in your lab notebook. Um, I'm sure they'll be posted on recitation pages. Uh, but please do these by yourself um, so you can become comfortable with these kind of problems. The buffer problem, I'm really not too worried about. Um, I don't know how many buffers there will be in unit four. There'll be more titrations and entropy, if anything. But please know how to do these. Um, they will come back to haunt you if you don't. Other than that, um, at least where I'm at in Lincoln, Nebraska, it is absolutely gorgeous out. Um, so I'm going to go enjoy the weather, get outside. Um, once again, sometimes the best thing you can do in the midst of all this is get outside and stay healthy instead of being inside all day. Um, so basically, I just told you is chem Sundays aren't a thing. Uh, go ahead and do something else with your day. I know we just had an exam, so you guys should be, there's minimal material to learn anyways. So go ahead and enjoy yourselves. Um, we look forward to seeing you on Monday in lecture. I hope that you guys subscribe to my videos. I know I have quite a few. Thank you for all the comments. I've got a quick, pretty good outflow of support. So I'm going to keep doing these until the end of the semester. Um, if you have any problems you'd like me to work on here, please send them my way via my email and I will do those live for you. Um, have a good weekend and stay safe. Go Big Red.